Hi everybody. <clears throat> this is episode one of Real Life with Richard. I'm Richard L. Scott, the host of this new forthcoming podcast. So I'm, I'm calling this episode zero because this is just a introductory or introduction to the podcast and myself. As I mentioned before, I'm Richard L. Scott. Some of you who see this may know me, some may not. But the ideal is to tell the trials, the struggles, the mundane of my life. A lot of things that'll be obvious and some things that you may not know or have heard uh, about myself to reveal some, some, some new things. From the cover of the podcast as it is now, and even the, the way I'm presenting now, my aim is to be authentic, real, uh, to tell uh, some of the things I've gone through in life. This is helpful for me already to do this, but hopefully, prayerfully, to be helpful and beneficial to others. Uh, cycle of release. I'm looking to try to release at least one episode every other week, so roughly 26 episodes in 2024 and the length I'm shooting for between 15 and 30 minutes. Initially it will just be be me taking a theme that the goal is not, not to have it overly scripted but I, I, I do plan to have a theme something that I discuss <coughs> excuse me for that episode Moving, moving forward to focus on whatever that particular theme is. But I welcome guests and eventually hope to have guests. So if you reach out to me, if you if you like to be featured, the only thing I ask is that you be real and authentic. Why this podcast and why now? I have been trying to publish my first book, I'm um, humbled to say, well over 20 years. And for whatever reason, something, I allow myself to be unaccountable. Here's the first opportunity to be real and just to own it, to get it done. My hope is by doing this podcast in this way, it, it, it does two things. It charges me to be more accountable to what I say because now I'm putting it out publicly and openly so others are, are hearing and seeing it and there's an expectation of the delivery of it and it helps me to flush out some of the concepts that I've been struggling with. So as I share them, hear, say it plainly and, and openly, I can go back from these episodes and take out the gems, the bits and pieces, and to share it. This is therapeutic for me. I, I call it real life with, with Richard, and what I hope to cover in this is the good, the struggles, and the mundane. The mundane, the everyday life to remind us to, to take joy from the simple things in life. And I say the struggles because it's not necessarily bad, it's just life that, that happens to, to us all. Cover my, my faith walk, although this is in no way intended to be a ministry podcast, I am a minister, I am a follower of, of Christ. I don't apologize for that and Thus, it will come out throughout the, the episodes and even staying so and doing so, hopefully that's beneficial for some. There have been those who have asked me indirectly and some have wondered, well, why are you not pastoring now? That too, I promise, if you come back for future episodes, I will dedicate uh, at least a segment, if not an entire episode, 
explaining that. So my, my faith walk and what does it mean to live daily as a Christian and not just preaching on Sunday or teaching on Wednesday, but what, what does it mean for, for you being a Christian and living out that faith walk? Uh, why, why I love being a, a technologist, as I refer to myself, I also have a YouTube channel, The Black Christian Geek, and a friend once said to me, after I referred to myself as a geek a couple times, she said, Richard, you're not a geek. And I said, one of two things. One, you don't know me as well as you think you do, or you don't know what a geek is. So hopefully I, I'll be able to explore some of the the reasons why I like being a technologist and, and how that impacts my life. But again, I, I have a, a whole YouTube channel, The Black Christian Geek, where, where I focus largely on that. So that, that won't be the, the big focus of this particular podcast, but it will come out because that is also uh, a part of who I am. And thirdly, I'm a natural encourager. I genuinely like to see the best in others and how what I learn from others helps to 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 make me a better person so what 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 do my friends say about me i recently met with some of my high school classmates and we were discussing some things and one of the things i said uh, to one of the friends while i was sitting at the table i said we even when we remember things accurately and it's historic we want to be careful how we tell those stories later in life because who we are now is not who we were. And we want to allow uh, those who have grown to live in the space that they're, they're, they're in now and not the, the, the person that they were, but the person uh, who they've become, who, who they have become and even though, even as we all strive to, to be better, who we desire to be, if, if, if we're not that now. Case in point, um, I shared recently with, with my sibling three, and I'm the seventh of eight children, the youngest of five, five boys. And we, we have a sibling three, and I share it with them my weight. When I got on the scale at the doctor's a few weeks ago, I was 278 pounds. That is the second heaviest I've ever been in my entire entire life and the heaviest I've been in 19 years. <laughs> One of my sisters said, Richard, you, you, you better than me. I wouldn't share that, but just like I'm sharing it openly now, real life with Richard because uh, I believe that it basically takes two things to succeed, knowing what to do and doing it. And I confess to you that I started the, the shift, the transition back to better living, better eating, better health, December 1st. So I'm already ahead of that, but I will keep you all abreast to the struggles and the successes that I'm doing to, to get a grasp of my, my better health. The heaviest I've been in my life was 296.4 pounds, basically three 300 pounds. And in my adult life, I had gotten down to as little as 210 pounds when I was a, a avid runner. I've completed a marathon in my life. So a 90 pound span, that's literally almost a third of, I had lost almost a third of what I weighed. And a few weeks ago, it was 278 pounds. My goal is basically to drop approximately 40 pounds over the next six months. So stay tuned. We'll see. Real life with Richard. There will occasionally be, be tears. Why tears? I was explaining to my five-year-old that all tears are not tears of sadness. There are tears of triumph. There are tears of victory. There, there are tears of of relief, there are tears of joy. And some things I share, 
no matter how many times I tell the story, I know I'll cry. When I was actively pastoring, a member came up to me once and he said, Pastor Scott, you would make a pretty good preacher if, if you weren't crying so much. And I think it's easy to make a blanketed statement like that when you don't know the story behind the tears. So I assure you, with this real life with Richard, there'll be plenty of, of tears, but I will take the time to explain the stories behind the tears and hopefully that we won't just be ha having a crying fest, but that we will learn from it and what we can grasp from that and grow from it. Now, here's some questions I want to ask as, as I'm preparing to close out this episode zero promotional Real Life with Richard podcast. Stay tuned, coming in 2024. But have you ever wondered, am I the only one going through this, whatever this is? Hmm. How will I make it? Can I recover? I shared my, my story um, with my weight and the one public sermon and biblical teaching lesson I've had in the past year and a half, I did like mid-October, so it's been about two months ago. And in that, uh, I shared then that I had a moment where I felt worthless. And I thank God that I have a twisted sense of humor because even in that moment when I first felt worthless, it was pressed upon my heart that worthless is not worth nothing. So even feeling that way, I knew I had something within me that I could overcome and grow to do better. So can I recover from this? <coughs> Excuse me. Is it okay not to be okay? After all we've collectively been through over the past couple of years, oh my God, I, I'm still going through my head and heart to figure out what and how to share, even from my, <coughs> excuse me, from my own perspective, what, what I can and should share in the moment. Because although I'm transparent and, and open and, and I want to share what I'm going through, I, I have an obligation and responsibility to protect those um, others who may not want, want some of this information shared, but what I've just been through, what, what we've collectively been through uh, as a family in the last 18 to 24 uh, months has been uh, quite challenging. But come back so we can share some of this together and we can grow through it together. As my friend Grenard McClendon would say, it's better to grow through something than just go through it because we all grow, go through things, but if we grow through it, we can learn and come out better on the other side. Thank you all for watching episode zero, the introduction episode of Real Life with Richard, and I look forward to you all coming back for episode one. Again, this is Richard L. Scott with Real Life with Richard. Thanks for watching and God bless. I look forward to seeing you in the first episode.